There's a stock that's up almost 500% today. And what stock is that? It's ticker symbol TOP, aka Top Financial Group. But hold up. I am not saying that you need to buy it. What I'm saying is you need to understand how to win when you find yourself in these plays that run up like that. Now, let me know in the comments. Did you get in and you were able to make money with this one? Or were you sitting on the sidelines like me and did not get in this one and did not make money with this one? Again, there will be so many more plays that you can make money with, but you got to understand deeply what's going on here. So now this one is up basically 400%, 447 to be exact in one single day. Now notice though, because don't get sidetracked, it's down 40% after hours, but overall it's still up significantly. But a lot of people jumped in it today chasing it because of what happened in the last week where it's up basically 938 percent and i actually got a text message from somebody who was very important to me one of my sisters and she said this I said hey bro what's up how are you i have a question can you see what's going on with top financial i understand none of this but i have a few dollars in it and it just went up and i don't know exactly what that means or what to do next and i say hey sis i'm doing well if I brought something that went up a lot, I sell enough to get my original investment out. For example, if I put in 100 into something that turned into 200 quickly, I would sell 100 of it and play the rest of it with house money. But if Stupid, I really want and I really think about chance. that, I'm more likely to sell not just 100% of it and get my original investment out, 100% of my original investment, I'm more likely to probably try to get 120% of it out. You know what I'm saying? Or 150% of it out, aka if I got $200 in there, guess what? Because it went up from 100 to two, now I'm trying to take 150 out. I might let the other 50 rock, but at a minimum, I got to get my original investment out because then I have no risk. And these things are important for us to know. And what I thought about with this was why I actually do this. I get on here to learn and talk to you about financial literacy and help to educate you on that. And there's a game that many of you may have played. Let me know in the comments. Yes or no, if you ever played this game or if you ever even heard of it. And what game is that? It's called Monopoly. And we got to talk just very briefly about the psychology of why games like this are important. And when I read it, I was like, yo, hold up. And this is a special version of it, the Rick and Morty version of it. It says two to six players. Okay, that makes sense. But it says up to or ages 17 and up, 17 and up, hold up. I feel like people who are younger need to understand this because you know what? It lets you know what kind of advantage you could give your kids with generational wealth. And what do I mean by that? So check this. Whenever you play this game, everybody starts with zero. You start with basically no money. You go around the board and you look at all of the properties and you gotta pass go. To do what? Collect that sweet $200. Every single time you pass go, you collect $200. But you know what? After a few rounds, there are going to be some people who end up owning, let's call it things like, like hotels. You can't really see it, but you end up owning hotels and houses. And you put them right on top of the properties. And whoever lands there, they have to pay the rent for that house. And if it's a hotel, they had to pay even more. But imagine that you set your family up in such a way that when you were out of the game, you set them up with a house. You set them up with a hotel. So now they don't have to start the game like everybody else and just wait to pass go to get that $200. They're going to collect if they pass go, but they're also going to collect if the other people end up landing on their properties, landing on their house, landing on that hotel. So I want to ask you, do you want the people who you care about, the next generation, do you want them to start with nothing? The same way that you started, how you had to dig yourself up from the bottom with nothing? Or would you like them to start with at least one house? Would you like them to start with at least one hotel? Would you like them to start their life and their journey with at least one share of an ETF like VTI, a share of Apple, a share of Microsoft, a share of Nike, or a whole lot of them so they don't got to start from nothing like you and they could build off of what you gave them? That's very important to me. And that's why I want you to think about that generational wealth is key here. And that's why I'm always getting on here every day to talk about the real, to talk about how we could succeed, how we could do it together, how nobody's going to come and save us. We got to do it ourselves, family. That's very important to me. If you feel like, let me know in the chat and let's get into it. Let's talk about what's going on in the market, because I'm seeing a lot of things that look very suspicious when you hold them up to the light that I'm going to bring to your attention. Now, this episode is brought to you by me and the Discord family, where you could come and join 
the stock options classes. You could come and join the live trades. I do eight live streams a month and you can watch me trade on the live streams and see how it's really done, right? You could get the automated alerts, the watch list. You could get into classes, like I said, options classes. If you don't know from a very beginner, come on down and you can get into technical analysis classes. Take them at your own pace, family. I will see you over there. Shout out to everybody who sold out the first section and the second section. Now, let's talk about it. What's going on right now? Hold up. This is extremely important. Because this is making the market look like it's pumping up, but it looked fake to Not me. So it says right here, the Fed emergency bank loan rise, it's up to 150 billion, 155.2 billion from 143. Now I know what you're thinking, Keenan, what does this even mean? Why is it even relevant to me? Well, it's relevant to you because when you look at the market, the stock market today, you can see that and you can follow it with ticker symbol SPY, for example, to look at the Fortune 500 companies and see that it's up basically 8.5. Look at this slope. This thing is basically shooting up. And you think to yourself, wow, I love to see the market pumping up. I wonder why it's going on. And I wonder if it'll keep going on. I wonder if there's a reason. Oh, yeah, there's a very specific reason. And there's many, but this is one of them that many people aren't speaking on. But I want to keep it in your front eye. Now, let's check this out. I think this pop up is fake. I'm gonna just keep it real. I'm gonna just keep it raw. I think it's I think it's fake. We did it. We did it, Joe. I think it's fake. So let's take a look at why. I mentioned this in a previous video. Do you see from March 13th, 2023? Ticker simple SPY, like we just said, is all the way up to 415 right now. Naturally, it was going to fall because you hear all this talk about recessions, bank failures, people losing their jobs, the tech stocks basically laying off everybody. So what happened on March 13th? Those who have been watching me for a little bit, you see where I'm going with this. The market was coming down naturally and then it bounced right off of about 350, 350. Remember, it's at 415 and it's just been going up basically ever since. But what happened on that date about March 13th or the day before? Let's take a look. The Wall Street Journal posted this Silicon Valley Bank got or the government and the Federal Reserve and the Treasury were looking to bail them out as of March 12, 2023. Hold up. That's a whole day before the market started to bounce as if they got that check in an infusion that found its way to the market. You know what else? It says right here at AP News, the government moves to stop potential banking crisis. Oh, March 12 again. So what happened here was the Treasury. And the Federal Reserve, a.k.a. Jerome Powell, for example, Janet Yellen, people, the powers that be, they're pumping money into the market through the back door. It's not coming in straight to the market. But we see that these banks, these institutions are basically borrowing billions, tens of billions of dollars that are finding their way into the stock market and it's pumping it up. So when we see these things happening, we say, oh, that's why the banks... This is why the stock market is pumping up because they may be giving other people, they're taking loans and then they're giving out other people loans and then that money is finding its way right into the stock market. So what happens when the well run, runs dry? What happens when that happens? We get the natural decline and this is why we haven't been into that recession. They are fighting it tooth and nail. Election season is coming up. There's so many things coming up that they do not want to let the market naturally fall like it would. So you gotta keep your eye on that and pay attention so you can understand. Hmm, are we at the top of the market and then it's going to drop? What are the signs that it's going to keep going up? If we keep seeing these bank bailouts, they're going to keep artificially holding the market up. But one thing that you got to pay attention to, I'm going to keep ringing this bell so you can pay attention to it, is May 3rd, 2023. We're going to get the next potential interest rate hike. And we heard, again, interest rates are through the roof, credit cards, personal loans, mortgages. They're extremely high because they've been heightening the interest rates basically for almost a year now so now let's check this out bloomberg just posted an article that said feds bullard and again this is the st louis federal chief and he basically said he got a forecast that's even higher than the median forecast of about 5.1 keep in mind the fed rate is about 5.0 right now the median is saying that it's going on about 5.1 but he's saying this he's saying that he sees it going to 5.6 now again i gotta hit him with the, the with cap. the stop the cap because i don't necessarily agree with that but again He's saying that the way that the economy is going right now, the Fed is going to have to go even harder than they already are going. So he's giving us this crazy forecast. But again, a lot of the time they give you things to scare you, not necessarily to prepare you. And this would very likely cause a hard recession. So now 
Let's talk about it. <laughs> when you get back to top financial and you look at that and you see it's up 400%, you got to ask yourself, family, is this something that I'm looking to get into long term, even short term or anything like that? I want you to think to yourself, sometimes you got to just let them go. You can't catch them all. If you decide to play that, understand, you're taking a high risk. You got to ask yourself, if you already got in it, are you playing with house money? And I'm not going to tell you how to handle it, but I want to just tell you that sometimes you will find yourself interested in something that's just running up like crazy. And if you do, you say, hey, do I have a plan? Am I going to go in here blind? Or am I going to say, hey, I see everybody making money with this. I'm going to sit on the sideline. What is Keenan Grace going to do? I'm personally going to sit this one out. If you make money with it, I want to give you a salute, but I also want to give you the mindset to say you got a plan with it. Because with something like this, where I see it go up 400% and then come down 40%, it's too volatile, and I would have to be paying so close attention to it to try to make money with it that I personally am not going to do it. But it still could run up. It still could drop like crazy. I personally think it's more likely to drop than to run. But I can't tell the future. I ain't pansy the losi. But I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I hope you picked up some gems in this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.